My name is Dalen Simons. I work uh, for Mastery. And really, my goal of this entire talk, you know, I've been working as a marketing doer um, for about 15 years now. And my goal is for everyone that is here at this talk to leave the room not thinking that marketing is a bad word anymore. And that sounds funny until you look at some of the examples of marketing, why developers have really ingrained allergic reaction to the term marketing sometimes. I think Jeff, um, in his keynote yesterday, said that Twilio had gone to over 600 developer events. That's a huge investment in developer-facing marketing when you have evangelism and evangelists going out to all those different events. But until we get there, we've got perceptions and hopefully mostly misconceptions around marketing. They perceive developers as a generality tend to see marketing as obfuscating truth. It feels somehow not authentic, right? It feels in not quite honest. Um, so this is where the, the snake oil metaphor comes in quite handy. Um, also because in the US we have this entire economy based on consumer. It may be like snake oil that doesn't even work. You're building demand for something that has no value for me. Or it could be building value for something really scary that you just don't need that much of. Um, and then, of course, here's my favorite. This is my personal, the marketing geniuses that came up with the full screen takeover have personally wasted probably hours of my time, right? So I've got something to say to them. I also have something to say to the marketing geniuses that came up with this show that my grandmother is now calling me wondering why all of the startups in Silicon Valley, right, you guys can agree with me on this one, are poolside with the beer in their hand in a bikini. Because that's, yeah, that's what happens in startups, right? We can all attest to that uh, in this room. But the good news for the Twilio's and the SendGrids and the Masheries and the TalkBoxes and all of the companies who are making those investments in developer marketing, they are going to be starting in 2012 and going forward, leaps and bounds ahead of other companies who are not doing it as well. And the flip side of, of that, of course, is you're going to be falling further and further behind if you're not making those in investments. So one of the key um, macroeconomic indicators, of course, is consumerization of IT. As we're going into marketing uh, in 2012 and beyond, that I, I, I call the upshot of this basically our sudden realization that we didn't have to line up like sheep you know, for our IT department to hand out crackberries. We actually could do mobile devices that had wonderful design, that had a ton of applications that you can use both in your professional life and your personal life. Um, that is huge. And consumers have a lot more demands over their mobile device now than they ever did before. And marketers are going to have to keep up. This looks like maybe a list for your IT department to pay attention to. It's a list for marketers to pay attention to. Who here remembers Jeff Lawson's Draw the Fucking Yellow talk? Yeah? The Business of APIs talk? Yeah. So this is one of the slides, actually, from his talk. This is all about marketing. He actually called it Jeff Lawson's uh, first rule of enterprise software. Um, this is basically how marketing has traditionally been done. And if you keep doing it like that, you're going to be falling further behind. The second trend, macroeconomically speaking, is this trend of companies who are transforming and thinking from a product into what I call platform think, or thinking like a platform. Um, and consumers have a lot of expectations here, too. I think Jeff talked on stage at the keynote a little bit about cloud, ubiquity, ubiquitous connectivity. And most of all for these cloud services is the demands of a user. It's a very demanding user because everything's at the convenience of your customers suddenly in this metaphor, right? And then the third, of course, arguably the most important um, for this is in 2012, it's all about developer-driven business models, right? And increasingly, in the Valley in particular, the startups that are in the audience right now can't compete with the tech titan salaries. Um, so how can you compete? A lot of the uh, developer marketing people who with, that talk with authenticity and credibility and build stuff, uh, market to doers, the way that Twilio does, are going to be able to compete 
like the Stripes, the Twilio's, the Etsy's, because they have the tech credibility to pull it off without those high salaries. Um, so this is where I always like to take a pause step. This is because I'm a marketing doer. I like to apply everything, and I want everyone to walk away with some nuggets of applied information that they can apply in their day-to-day -day job. Um, if I had to summarize the entire talk, it's get out of the way marketing, right? So if you're marketing developers, they don't care that you spent $10,000 on an exclusive branding opportunity with your glossy logo if they can't get their hands on your tool. So it's a totally different mindset with developers. And the first thing you have to be very, the first point up here is something that people with their ivory tower pedigrees, with their MBAs from very uh, esteemed institution are fundamentally uncomfortable with. When you work in developer marketing, 90% of the people you work with are automatically smarter than you. Um, and I always use this. I, I hired two developer evangelists, and then one of them showed me this. I'm like, yes, you guys are always on it. This is why you guys are going to rule the earth. Uh, <laughs> and when it comes to being comfortable with that, they always say, you know, hire people that are smarter than you. I think as a, you have to be fundamentally comfortable enough with yourself to not always have to be the smartest person in the room. And that means listening and responding with dialogue and respecting the other person. Whereas a lot of traditional brand marketing is very ivory tower, top down, end of story. Um, I love this example. These are just examples of people that we've interacted with in our marketing. And developers also, it's a, about a conversation. It's a two-way dialogue. And ideally, not only are you listening to them, but you're also responding back to them saying, I heard you, and I'm going to be reacting. So you can get positive feedback like this. You can see this was dated in July. And then three months later, he let us know a little, bit, a little owie that we had with our um, S3 server that caused our Gmail spam. So you have to be able to take criticism, too, right? That's not always comfortable for a lot of organizations culturally. Um, so this is a very important part that you have to feel open and not defensive when people are giving you feedback about your stuff, too. Um, second one, and everyone here knows that Twilio is very good at this, let them get under the hood, right? Developers want to get hands on as quickly as possible. If you make them call up a sales guy before they can even get hands on with your tool, that's not great developer marketing. So what are some examples of that? Free trial and self-activation. Make it easy on them. Make sure that there are in-context, nuanced, um, relevant upgrade notices that make it very clear when is the right time to upgrade and what are the benefits of upgrading. Um, and don't do full screen takeover, which is back to the very point of my talk. And then here is a very interesting point because it's all about pricing. You don't need to be transparent maybe all the way on your enterprise level, your, your platinum and beyond. But the key is to make sure that you have a clear pricing model that, again, they don't have to pick up the phone and feel like they're getting the used car salesman treatment. Well, yeah, I'm going to charge this now, but I'm going to cut you a deal later. Or my friend's talking, and get one price, and I get another. This gives them confidence that they're getting a straight shot, and there's data that they can truly evaluate your tool on. If it's all obfuscated and they don't know where you're coming from, it feels kind of like a used car experience for them. Um, this is another credit to Jeff's slide um, from that draw the fucking owl talk that I love so much. This is th that, that um, arrow right there with the sales team. In the traditional model, uh, we pointed to our friends SAP and other ones, when they actually say free child, that sales team gets engaged right after the website visitor, right? So what we're saying in 2012 and beyond, if you're targeting developers, you need to move that way down. They, by the time they come and talk to you, they have already made up a lot of their mind about your tool because they've done their internet research. They've been on Quora. They've been on Stack Overflow. You have very little opportunity to change their mind um, at that point. So you want to make sure you're out there participating where developers are gathering their information about you. Sell aspirin, not vitamins. This is critical to developer marketing. I see this time and time again that marketers get caught up in, oh, the fun, creative stuff. Oh, I want it to look like this. I want my logo. I'm going to pay $10,000 more because I want my logo to be four times as big as everyone, and I want to own this opportunity. If you're getting comments like this, I work at Mastery, so there's a lot of 
let's call it pain around API integration. It can be OAuth, it can be broken docs, it can be the PHP code example or the Node.js code sample that's broken and not maintained for them. There's a lot of pain. So can you imagine any of the guys or ladies who wrote this comment being receptive to my glossy brochure? No, because they're in pain, so it causes a lot of stress. You, just for the same reason, you can't focus on buying life insurance if your house is on fire. If you go back to the Maslow's you know, hierarchy pyramid, you can't focus on self-actualization if you're worried about where your next meal is gonna come from. Same for developers, really focus on their pain. So what Mastery did is, as part of that, we said you know, we'd love for more and more um, developers to integrate with APIs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open source our tools. This is a form of developer marketing. If you're hiring the right evangelists who are able to get hands on with developers and talk developer to developer, engineer to engineer, with a lot of code and are specialized, you can create open source documentation and client libraries and code samples and SDKs and all of that good stuff that is part of your onboarding process. A lot of people don't think of this as marketing, but it is. It, a lot of the objectives around evangelism and social media and community management and developer outreach and developer platform, et cetera, come down to tools like this because this is solving their pain. Solve my pain, then I'll pay attention to your benefits of your tool. And then of course with get out of the way marketing, this is what you love to see. The non-choreographed, authentic, non-fake, get out of the way, this conversation happens without you, you monitor it and elevate it and make sure it has visibility within your organization of what developers like and what developers don't like, but you've just earned yourself a fan for solving their pain. And they're gonna go out and sell your tools for you. That's great marketing. Uh, this is a really fun one um, that I just came up, actually I see Adam and I know John Sheehan's in the the um, room. This came up at the Business of APIs conference we just had in San Francisco, where I think it, it inspired me because it, it really resonated with me. It, it reminded me of what Tony Shea was saying about your culture is your brand. And this resonated with a lot of marketers at the time because the model is kind of like a Mad Men model, right? 1960s, you throw a lot of money at it, and you can buy your way in to legitimacy. You can buy a brand if you have enough money back in Mad Men days, right? With Twitter and Facebook and Foursquare and all these others, you're, what your customers are saying about you is your brand. That can be negative. Hopefully it's overall positive. That is your brand. Not what you can't buy your way into legitimacy with your brand anymore. That holds true if you, you say culture is to your brand as documentation is to your marketing, so think about that. Documentation can be replaced with sample apps and code samples and quick start tutorials. Twilio is a sterling example of how to do great developer marketing. In this case, their documentation is their marketing. It's way more effective to invest your money in onboarding developers quickly than it is to spend $10,000 on an email list rental, right? Or 5,000 on that exclusive branding opportunity because your logo is gonna be bigger than everyone else. That's not smart, focused marketing for developers. I also love um, the Stripe, the OAuth, they get a lot of kudos for this. Another developer pain point that they really focused on doing a good job, they could have spent that money elsewhere, they decided to spend it right where it matters to developers most. And then of course, my favorite tweet, which was you need to invest the same amount of resources that you do in your current marketing materials in your documentation, right? And that can be all kinds of developer tools as well can be replaced with that. And then lastly, uh, I like to talk about this. It's, it's taking a step back a little bit because this is really cultural. Um, do, does anyone remember the Cathedral in the Bazaar, the open source? Metaphor, okay, good. So this is by Eric Raymond. He's kind of one of the godfathers of Linux and open source, and he wrote this um, book called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. It was a contrast between two styles. 
So with the bazaar method being the open source method and the cathedral being the more um, ivory tower approach, right? So going and contrasting these two examples has a lot of similarities with your marketing approach too. And if you're capable as a culture in your company to go ahead and try the bizarre approach. So let's start with cathedrals. There are these attributes. My developer shorthand with developer marketing that developers go off, you know, right away is it's read-only marketing, right? I'm gonna stand, I'm gonna climb to the top of a mountain, I'm gonna go grab some stone tablets, I'm gonna write down my marketing message and I'm gonna reveal them to you and you will know more because I'm the expert. Um, and then I'm gonna go on my way, right? So that's kind of the cathedral approach. Um, definitely the, the pedigree MBAs definitely seem to like this approach a lot. And then you've got the marketing doer approach, as I like to call it. Um, developer shorthand that everyone can grok is read-write marketing, right? So this is, again, the two-way dialogue. You're participating. You're not one-way messaging to people. You're actually listening and acting on feedback and then prioritizing what they tell you and getting back to them to let them know that you actually heard what they said and acted on it, and it's on your product roadmap. Um, this type of approach is, and I heard the CEO of Zarly mention the bazaars, which I think was really interesting. It's innately human, this approach. It's very human focused, right? Um, it's very democratic. Um, it's very vibrant. Uh, and I think this approach for a lot of the startups of today is very accessible too, because you're on the, the same footing. You're, you're a human being, you're a developer, I'm a developer, we're gonna do marketing rather than having the big logo and brand police looking down on you and imposing marketing on top of you. So these are my five tips. I wanted to make sure that all of the marketing doers here um, in the office walked away with. And this is the time that I'm going to open it up for questions. If anyone has any questions about being a marketing doer or anything that I set up here today. Yes, there's a microphone coming, sorry. Hey, thanks for the talk, that was awesome. Um, Thank you. Quick question, so in the journey of any technology focused company that's selling to developers, there's a phase where you move from selling to independent developers who are experiencing your product through forums and say places like Reddit programming, Hacker News and stuff like that, which is an organic mode to a mode where you're a little bit more programmatic, where you want to go to startups who can pay money for it or larger companies who can pay a little bit more money for it. Um, the question really is, when you go to independent developers, they love to try out new stuff so you start seeing your adoption go up, but then the quality of the projects tend to be side projects or weekend projects or hackathons that they use you for. That may not necessarily migrate to a long-term good quality project that stays on forever, right? And your traction goes up. What are the marketing tactics you can do to switch between these two modes without necessarily going down the, we'll go down the top-down marketing branding approach? That's a great question. There's a lot to work with there. So. Um, I think the companies like um, to, that I mentioned before that are very good at developer marketing do have that free trial concept. And even if you think that, the, oh, they're a prototype, so like Heroku may be like a great example of that. I've heard a couple of mobile development, I, I think Parse is here, right? So are they going to be able to scale with me when it comes time? That's, did you, if you saw that adoption funnel, maybe I can quickly go back there. Um, with Jeff Lawson's, that's really where you want to have a very effective sales force to go in and close when they're ready to scale, right? So there's kind of the prototyping that you want those technical influencers to get on, because if this, in the fail f faster world, right, this one may not work out, but they're definitely going to be influencing a lot of other deals. We also see at hackathons that even though we just call them, you know, garage developers or in, in London, I know they use the bedroom developers term. These guys have full-time jobs. They're influencing stuff all the time. So to can, you know, throw them in this bucket of, oh, they're just hacker developers, garage developers, not anymore. Because a lot of companies are asking them to build nimble prototypes and where they're finding their way to show off is at these hackathons. So I, I would also argue the, the Marketers in here know what I'm talking about when we talk about segmenting your target audience, right? Your market segments and your target buyers. It's not as clear cut um, as you might think when you're getting those people, you know, onboarded. So I would also argue that 
making sure that you engage your sales folks in the right time to make sure that they're targeting when, get really good data about when they're ready to scale is critical because the vast majority of developers and technical developers don't want to talk to that guy until they're ready to talk to the guy. The guy in the shiny shoes, we call him, right? So, did I answer your question? Great, thank you. Anyone else? All right. Um, well, so going to quickly go all the way back to my talk. Uh, because I worked at eBay myself for five and a half years, I have this thing about feedback. It's kind of what I get all evangelical about. So for the Twitter, the Twilio, part, pardon me, organizers, it's really helpful for them if you give them feedback on the talks that you want to see more of next year. So if you liked it, you have constructive criticism or compliments, please give your conference organizers feedback. This is how they make sure that the content is relevant and you're getting great speakers for your money. So thank you very much.